Okay, uh, a quick review on how to work with the uh, timelines. First off, uh, if you click on your actual timeline itself, you'll see a little uh, frame come around it. Up in the top, you'll see uh, a tab that says Smart Art Tools. You can't see it on my screen here, uh, but underneath that, you'll see another tab called Design. If you click on the Design button, on the left-hand side, there's that text pane. I highly recommend turning that text pane on so that you can see the text on the left-hand side. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to type uh, into it. Uh, every new bullet point you add creates another point on the list here. You should have five events on one page and on one timeline and five events on the bottom. If you're missing some, you could always press the Enter key after the last bullet. If is it an indented bullet like this, just simply hit the backspace key and it'll create a new sixth line uh, on here or anything to that effect. If you have too many, scroll down, you might have some blank bullets on the bottom, so just simply put your cursor on those lines and press the backspace to delete them and it'll automatically update on the uh, timeline. So hopefully uh, you can at least get all that done. Once that's done on both timelines, everything's all good to go. Uh, you can focus on the title, but you have one problem I'll show you with you can what happens if you change the title to uh, you know like a larger font uh, and stuff like that. Let me just try to find a font here. Um, I found the font for uh, it's called stencil uh, and I'll make it WW II for World War II. But here's the deal. if you make the font a little bit bigger, you're potentially going to run into the problem of bumping your second timeline to the second page. Here's how you fix that. All you need to do is just take either one or both the timelines, look at the frame around it, and the very bottom middle, if you put your cursor in this little line right here, if you shrink it down just slightly, uh, that might be enough to uh, fit your timeline on it. So don't shrink one way too short, have the other one really big. So try to make them as even as possible but uh, that'll be able to bring the other one up. Uh, and so that's something that you need to pay attention to. And after everything's sh shrunk, you might look at mine, and I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but these fonts on the top one here are smaller than the fonts in the bottom one. So I could go back individually. As long as I'm on the Home tab, I can highlight these fonts here, and I can make the font size uh, slightly bigger to match the other ones manually. Okay, because every time you resize these uh timelines, they're going to automatically resize the fonts to best fit, and sometimes uh, you'd want them to be a, a match. Um, hopefully, and then the last thing you're going to want to do is click on the frame itself, go back under Smart Art Tools and click Design, and you'll see that says Smart Art Styles. There's a lot of uh, pre-built-in styles here that uh, you might want to change yours into. I would recommend to not choose one of the three-dimensional ones that kind of go off in the distance. Some of them make the fonts look really bad um, and, and stuff like that. Some aren't too, too bad. So use your best judgment, uh, and uh, you're going to pick one. What I say is once you pick one for the one font, make sure you pick the same thing for uh, the next uh, option as well because you don't want to have two different-looking timelines. Uh, so make sure you try to pay attention to which one you made for one and change the other one to match. All right, now that I have both of my uh, charts matching, um, the last thing we need to do is we need to put some pictures onto here. Uh, and so you're going to go into a, uh, a regular Google image search. Uh, so let me bring up my Google image search. Uh, I just simply went to google.com <coughs> and clicked on images. Um, I recommend on the top right corner, uh, you'll see either the word settings or you'll see a small little cog wheel. If you click on the cog wheel or the settings, make sure you choose search settings and change the search settings for safe search filtering to use strict filtering. Uh, once you've made strict filtering, click save preferences and then click OK. This will eliminate some of the uh, inappropriate pictures that might pop up in a Google search. Uh, now I'm going to search for... Uh, World War II, and uh, find a picture. You know, if you want to try to find a picture from the actual battle, that's fine. I'm just going to pick a generic picture. So here's what I'm going to do: is I'm going to click on the picture one time. The larger version of the picture is going to be right here. I'm going to right-click on it, 
and choose copy. I'm going to go to my Word document, I'm go to my Home tab, and I'm going to press the big giant paste button. I'm not going to click on the word paste, it's the actual picture paste. And it's going to put my picture somewhere. Don't worry if it moves your timeline around. And here's the very important step. Double click on the picture. Find a picture of a dog inside of a box that says wrap text. Click on that and then choose in front of text. When you do that, you can move your picture around anywhere you want. And so I'm going to shrink it down. And I'm going to put it right here. And so now the January 1st, 1949 first event is going to have a picture associated with it. For the January 2nd, second event, you would put a picture, um, let me just copy this one, you would put it above here. So essentially, uh, your pictures are kind of going to go uh, in this direction. You're going to have uh, pictures kind of going, uh, it's going to go like that, and then the other pictures you're going to put in, are going to go up like this. And so the events will kind of go up and down. Do you have to have a picture for every single event? The answer is no. I actually recommend just putting maybe two or three per timeline here and uh, give it a nice little touch. Uh, and so uh, you could do your Google image search and you simply just go back to Google, hit the back button, find another picture that might work, copy that, and paste it. But before you copy it, make sure you click once on the picture right click on it and choose copy. Uh, because the pictures are going to be shrunk down pretty small they do not have to be super large pictures. Uh, anything over like 150 pixels uh, would be nice. Uh, you could tell that by just hovering your mouse over top of the picture and you see that the numbers below it. Um, as long as those numbers are higher than 150 you should be in pretty good shape. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to work on this all by yourself and uh, good luck.